are some really cool examples, and these are from a year or two ago, as it is, but there's constantly new things that people are coming up with in terms of how to use open data to solve real life problems. Um, this one with the rat colonies, and the links for these are on the back of the sheet. The one about the rat colonies is a really good example of how this idea of silos, when you're able to break that down by giving access to different municipal departments to other departments' data, they were able, between looking at sanitation and looking at housing and looking at complaints, they were able to see what was going on with these rat colonies. Um, it's really fascinating. Um, the air quality one. This air quality one had to do with putting sensors on the puffers that kids and adults use when they have asthma issues. And the sensors were sending data that would help them know when, where, who, and then collect that data to better understand hot spots within a region, within a, a geographical location related to where people are have, experiencing trouble with the air quality. Um, and then trying to determine, you know, what are the actual, um, what's the causation behind that. Um, and then I just want to close with, okay, this is just lots of resources. I want to close with one example of why it's important to the private sector and to the public sector to have open data because of how it can really spur growth and improve um, information that we want to use to help us make decisions. Um, I, we talked about the New York City open data. Um, about three years ago, Yelp, as everybody's probably used Yelp or seen it come up one time or another when you're looking for a review, Yelp was finding out from their users that um, they wanted to see health inspection records for restaurants and that that would be a really useful metric for people to judge where they want to go between restaurants. So Yelp knew that New York City puts all of its health inspections into their open data portal on a timely, I don't know if it's real time, but certainly on a timely and complete basis. So you can find them, you can read them. But it was kind of raw bulk data. And it wasn't being collected and presented in any specific way. So Yelp, which is a for-profit, went to Socrata, which is also a for-profit, but they're very focused on the government section sector, and they also have a foundation that has given money to public entities to help incentivize them to open data. Um, Yelp went to Socrata, who's very familiar with, with public data, and said, hey, we need to figure out a way to extract and use this health inspection data so that we can produce some kind of a metric, like, you know, I think it's now a circle, that will show a number that has to do with you know, health inspection ratings. Um, can you help us? So Yelp worked with Socrata, and they created a system that now produces this number for every restaurant in Yelp system in New York City that's got health inspection data. So that when you go and you look up um, you know, the Obama pan on the Upper East Side, you'll be able to see their health inspection information. Um, you know, they, I think they've taken that and used it now in a couple of uh, cities like San Francisco, I'm not sure where else. But backing up, if a city isn't either collecting health inspection data, collecting it in a way where you can digitize it, and you can standardize it, and you are putting it somewhere that others can access it, then you can't even have the conversation between Yelp and Socrata. So having open data at, it, you know, at the core level of how government functions enables all these other activities. And I think that the private sector knows this, but because government can be so slow and so spotty, they have taken it on as their own cost. Like I was mentioning with the insurance companies, um, I've talked to Westfield Insurance, and I know that you know they don't even bother on their own looking at open data or looking at public data. They just they just source it out um, and spend money on it, um, and that shouldn't be. 